My Permanent Record by Jim Tritton. I was in a long queue, waiting my turn in line. In my left hand was an aviator's flight logbook, OPNAV Form 3760-31, Rev 4-65. I opened it to the aircraft mishap section in the back of the book and looked down. The date, 7 March 1969. Model of aircraft, EA-1F. Damage, E. Primary cause factor, pilot, slash fatigue. Remarks, flap idler link failed. Combination of overstress and previous fatigue of the part due to overstress. Entry approved, RL Lofton commanding. It documented an error on my part, one for forever available for any logs and records yeoman, operations officer, or commanding officer to read. I made a mistake when flying, and I'd lowered the flaps on my airplane at too high an airspeed. Doing so broke a piece of one of the linkages that made the flaps work. I shuffled forward as the line moved. We all make mistakes. How many of us were told in high school if we kept doing something or not doing something, those things would become part of our permanent record. I did my share of time in Principal Kavanaugh's office. My God, do they send those permanent records to every new company when I applied for a job? If I make a criminal mistake with the law, the desk sergeant will dutifully record the transgression in a book. That's what they say, right? Book them, Dano. If found guilty or not, some court stenographer will use a corded keyboard to record the decision. Eventually, the record will be transcribed for others to read. Unless you're a juvenile and your file is confidential. Or if you enter the witness protection program and are sent to live in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. When my father was in the U.S. Navy, he had a personnel record. Twenty years after his death, I wrote to the National Personnel Record Center and paid a few dollars. They sent me his file. I learned a lot about my father from reading what various officers and chief petty officers said about his service. I wonder if we ever cleared his record with his bookie when he passed on. Do we all have multiple records or does someone <clears throat> maintain a single master permanent record where all these things are compiled? Is there a way to expunge entries with which we disagree? I'm sure everyone has work evaluations they would like to go away or an entry in a U.S. Navy pilot's logbook recording how he had lowered the flaps while the airspeed was too fast and broke an idler link. Is my, aw oh shit, I broke the flaps, balanced out by multiple personal awards, citations, letters of commendation, promotions, and the like. Just how many attaboys cancel out one small aw oh shit? How many if the transgression is really egregious? Can we convert to Catholicism right before the end, confess, and say a few Hail Marys as penance? How about making a sizable donation to the charity of the Pope's choice? No, wait, I'm Presbyterian, and I think I remember reading something about predestination at Sunday school many years ago. The line moved, and I shuffled forward some more. Only a few more before it'll be my turn. If you go for a job, it is likely someone will gain access to some part of your records. Certainly, the federal government checks whether a degree was in fact earned or whether your experience listed on the job application is as truthful as you described. I remember at least one individual who lied about having a doctorate on her job application and got away with it. At the time, she proudly told friends she had listed an earned Ph.D. on her application to beat out some disabled veteran on the civil service ranking systems. Did both her job and lying get it into her permanent record? There were still two folks in front of me in the line. I opened another of my Navy pilot log books to see if someone had recorded an aircraft crash on the aircraft mishap page. An accident far more severe than causing a flap idler link to fail. Interestingly, the record of mishaps in that log book is black, blank. Blacks, logs, and records, yeoman? Commanding officer trying to give me a break. Years later, I re obtained a redacted copy of the accident report from the Naval Safety Center. They had a record of what happened despite the mishap never making it into my pilot's logbook. 
Everyone in the squadron knew, even if it wasn't in my logbook. If other people were aware of what happened to me, was it cross-filed into my permanent record? Maybe there isn't some master fusion complex where all things we have done, some of which we would like to forget, are totaled up. Pluses and minuses. Naughty and nice. A comprehensive list of all that was good and bad. Perhaps recording all these entries into a single file with everything there is to know about a person is just too complicated for the average mortal in his databases. Problem is, I know. When I was finally at the head of the line, I saw an elderly man stooped over a desk, a nameplate engraved in gold before him. He had waist-length white hair, a long beard, and a drooping mustache. He wore a white robe. I hung my head, my hands clasped in front of me around my logbooks, as contrite as an expression on my face as I could manage. He called my name and lifted a single bushy white eyebrow. I raised my head and looked into his penetrating cobalt blue eyes. He opened a voluminous tome that thudded as it fell open on the desk. Dust rose in the air and he blew away a small cloud. He coughed, waved his hands to clear the air. Let's see what we have here. St. Peter tilted up the hardcover black book. I saw the title, The Permanent Record of James John Tritton.